So, can you just leave yours for a second and just have a look at this? I just want to go through the maths. Now you can obviously look at your numbers and see where you are, but can you just focus on the way I'm doing the maths? So the sum that I have over on the right, on the left-hand board there, where it says sales minus cost equals gross profit. I'll do this bit first. So my sales number is X, okay? Take away my, um, my cost here, and that's going to give me my gross profit. So how do I do my maths? Sales, we're going to take away our sales returns. And that goes in the right-hand column. So now that's my real sales figures, the real amount of money I earned from sales. We have opening stock of 72. I'm going to add that to that the real purchases figure. Corey, can you just follow this just to make sure that we know how to do the maths because we haven't done this before. Ordinary level haven't done this before. So I need to find out my real purchases. So I'll have purchases take away my returns out. So that gives me my real purchases. The reason why there's a couple of spare lines here is just sometimes there could be other costs, like there might be import duty or carriage in. We have none in this case. So I'll add those two numbers that we have above together, and that's going to give me my goods available. I'll take away my closing stock, and there's none mentioned in the question so far, so I'm going to leave that as zero. So that means that my goods available is also my cost of goods sold. So I'll subtract the cost from the sales. So the sales number minus the cost, there's my gross profit so far. You okay with that? All right? Okay. Moving on to our other incomes. We have two other incomes. I put them in the middle column. I'll add them and I'll have a total for those two. And I'll put that in the right-hand column. So we'll have gross profit plus other incomes gives me a new total. And then we're going to take away our expenses from that new total and that will give me my net profit. Okay? Now, uh, at this stage, I need to just double check. Have I got all of the numbers from the question in? And I know for definite I don't. There's a couple of things missing. Okay, and we're going to find out at the end and we'll be able to fix them. So, my, my expenses. I'll add up all my expenses. So, everything in this column, add them all up. Uh, and then my administration expenses. So there's my distribution expenses so far, and I've got my administration expenses. I'll add them up as well. And my financial expenses, which would be uh, if I have interest on any of my loans. And I hasn't mentioned anything about interest on loans so far. So I'm going to say financial expenses is zero. So now my overall expenses is going to be, again, I'm back to the right-hand column because I need to take my expenses away from the number above. So I'm adding my distribution expenses plus my administration expenses plus my financial expenses. So my net profit before tax is going to be the figure above minus my expenses. Are we okay so far? Now I mentioned nothing in this question about tax, so I'm going to leave tax as zero, so that means that my net profit after tax is the same as my net profit. And that number, Graham, just want to follow this just to make sure we know what we're doing? Okay, just. So the number that I've just calculated down here, the 241070, that's my net profit after tax, that's going to be added to my capital. Okay, so, and I put the capital number in, and I do know there's definitely some numbers missing from my balance sheet, okay? So I'm just going to go, I'm trying to go through the logic of how you should do the question. So, uh, here in my fixed assets, I've got buildings, uh, sorry, I've got cost, take away depreciation, gives net book value. So with buildings, I had the cost figure, and the net book value. When I took them away, I found my depreciation figure. With motor vehicles, I was given cost, I was given accumulated depreciation, so when I subtract those two numbers, that's going to give me my net book value. Furniture, I was given the cost, I was given the net book value, so I need to work out my depreciation. So need depreciation is going to be the cost minus my net book value. So my, uh, I have no financial fixed assets, so that would be an investment of some kind, so that's going to be zero. So I'm adding my three fixed assets. So I have all of the fixed assets, the tangible fixed assets, add them together, plus the financial, plus the intangible fixed assets, so I'll add all of those three together so far. So now I have all of my fixed assets added together. Are we okay so far? Now I need to move on and look at my current assets. So I'm going to add all of my current assets together, and so far the only one I've got is uh, my debtor's figure, so I'm just going to put that in there. It's the only one I have at the moment. Creditors is the only current liability that I've put in so far. 
So I'll take these two numbers away and that will give me my working capital. And that's how you always calculate working capital. All right? So working capital then is added to the number above. So working capital is in the right-hand column. We add it to my uh, total of my fixed assets. So, and that gives me my net assets. So equals 22, which is my working capital so far. But again, there will be other numbers to be added to it. And I'll get a total net assets 574. Okay? Moving to my finance buy, I'll add everything in this column here. So my capital plus my net profit and my drawings. I take away my term loan, sorry, I include my term loan in it, and that gives me my overall figure. And that's called capital employed. Now, if I've done the question right, these two numbers, capital employed and the net assets, should be the same. So in the exam, if they're not the same, you don't get bogged down with maths. Okay? You don't get bogged down and say, oh my God, you know, my sum is wrong. 90% of the marks is, did you put the number in the right place? So now I'm just going to quickly review what I left out. So I have all of these numbers down here so far in. Provision for bad debts, I forgot to put that in. So that's 2,300 and it's on the credit side. That is always taken away from our debtors up here. So I'll put that in. Uh, then the next one is debtors and creditors I've dealt with drawings I have term loan I've put in VAT what's VAT? asset liability expense or income? Liabilities. it's a liability it's money that we owe it's not a bill that we have we charge people VAT or we receive VAT but that money is belonging to the government it's not our money so generally we either are owed a refund but most of the time we're collecting VAT which we owe to the government so it's a liability. So in this question, VAT is 24 grand, and it's a liability because it's in the credit column. So put that in. So where are we now? So VAT. And it is 32, no, 20, 20 grand. I think. Uh, no, that's term loan. So VAT is 24. PRSI. What type of account is PRSI? Okay, it's a liability. It's money we're collecting from our staff, which we owe on to the government. So it's going to be another liability. And so that's 3580. Next one then is um, bank. 25760. What type of account is bank? Asset, liability, expense, or income? Asset. Asset, okay. Now it could be a liability if it was in the credit column, meaning we owe money to the bank. But in this case, it's in the debit column, it's 25,760. So, so that means it's up here. So I'll put that bank. Uh, 25,760, I think it was. Now, I've now found the things that were missing. I haven't changed my totals just yet, but obviously in the exam, you would go back and spend time. And if you had, if you had time, you would spend time to see, can I get my two total figures to be the same? You literally spend one minute of that. You don't have enough time in the exam to do that. So focus your attention on making sure that you get the structure down and you put the numbers in the right place. Are we all happy with that? 